Hey everyone, welcome back to Open. Our next guest is a philanthropist, Bronx Community Board member, and founder of Theory Nine, a nonprofit organization that focuses on the growth and well being of the Kingsbridge community. With the objectives being a place where kids can obtain resources, learn new skills, and foster healthy relationships. Theory nine introduces knowledge, self-worth, and love connecting all aspects of life while bringing education to the youth in underserved communities. And here to share more, we welcome philanthropist, Ross Community Board member, and Theory nine founder, Shakir Seegers. How you doing today? Good morning. Good morning, Shakir. How you doing? I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. Another day at open, right? It's another day on open. Actually, <laughs> you're one of the first guests to be in our first episode of the year of That's... open 2024, darling. Man, you got to set the bar right for the new year. It's 2024, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And you know what? Since we're talking numbers, right? I, I, I'm really curious to know what Theory 9 stands for. So theory meaning vision and the number nine meaning complete. So when the idea where we are placed where ideas grow and the vision becomes complete, you know, com comes complete. So theory nine is a vision complete. Nice. I like that. It's really, really thought out. So here's this company, this organization you founded in 2019 and you've served a massive amount of families thus far. Now, let, let's talk about, I guess, first, what inspired it and how you even got to this place of serving in the capacity of like basketball tournaments and of course, giving back to the community and um, just being a, a, a safe haven for developing the next generation. Uh, it pretty much started um, coming into 2000, end of 2018. Uh, I had came home, uh, getting ready for tour, and I visit home. And a couple of my friends back home were uh, advocating for changing the park, um, changing the backboards, doing some renovation to the park because the park hasn't been touched in over 20, 25 years at the time. And then, um, you know, we, we, we did our fundraiser. We went to the community. We raised about $10,000. And uh, we weren't able to do the renovations to the park at the time. So then after that, um, a pandemic hit. And it was just a mandatory thing that we came out with a vision after people going remote. You know, the schools went remote. Kids went remote. Parents became teachers. The computers became teachers, and, <laughs> yeah. and it was it was just a real thing that we had to just double back and say, all right, it's just not about the sports, you know. It's just not about just having a place. You know, the park is cool, but that's just where the community comes to comes together, right? You know, and then being a a a, 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 a person, a leader uh, of the community, a staple in the community, it was just something I had to see get done, you know, so me and my friends set out to push the narrative and change the community, uh, change for the better, you know, being a knucklehead coming from the community, <laughs> um, you know, it was only, it was only one of the right things to do, you know, um, people looking up to me, kids looking up to me, and then, you know, we, we did our first event, and it became like a, what's next, you know, the kids are always come up to me and run up to me anytime I would come back home and do an event, they'll be like, what's next, so, yeah, so you, now, I want to backtrack a little bit because you yeah. said come, I was on tour, but you didn't say what you were on tour for. So I was on tour with a, a artist named 24K Golden. Uh, just went, the album just went platinum two days ago. Um, we had a big hit that's uh, about eight times platinum called Mood. And what uh, was your role within this? So I managed an A&R, uh, and r and managed the program. Uh, and uh, the artists and a couple artists to follow. And then, um, you know, things took off for the kid and it was a back and forth thing. You know, I was living in Dallas. You know, I've been always on the road because at first I was a musician. Um, right. You know, I had my deal back in the day and then I left the community about 2015. And it was, if you look back at the community then, it was a, it was a crazy situation. A lot, of, a lot of havoc going on in the community. And I, uh, I up and left, 
And I kind of went to Dallas and kind of sat down, brought her home and found myself at the time. So coming into 2018, when I found Golden, you know, I went back behind the scenes. I left recording myself and, uh, you know, I walked away from the music industry and came back as a reinvent myself as a manager and artist and consultant and just looking for what was next. And then, um, you know, one kid blew and the next girl blew and the next kid got on and it was a, it was a, it was a, a, a eye opener for me because a lot of these kids come from the community and, um, you know, they want to see out the community. They want to, these are things they want to see, you know, they want to be these rap stars. They want to be these whole TikTok things. And at the time I was growing within it, you know, I was playing a scene in it. I was growing within it and, you know, coming back, it was just something I had to, you know, give back to the community. I know it's lovely. Thank you for sharing the story because it's so important, right? Because here's the thing. You could have easily just kept pursuing your dreams and not to say that you're not pursuing your dreams. It's just that you pivoted into pursuing your, your purpose. And purpose. there's a big difference. It's a, in- whole, it's a whole big difference. You know, it's different from me going state to state. You know, I could, I could, and I tell the kids and I tell the people, you know, every day, you know, I could have easily been say, you know, after community, I don't got to be here. You know, I, I made it right. out. Um, I'm making, doing my thing here. You know, I'm, I'm having, I'm at New Year's Eve parties with Miley Cyrus and, right. and I'm saying, you know, I'm over here at, at this artist crib. I'm playing right. karaoke over here at Serena Williams house. I could have lived the life, but it was just something that, like you said, your purpose and my purpose right. came calling and, you know, it was something that I just pivoted. You know, I had a, you know, I had my son had a, um and it was just growing up it's called growing up you know it's called growing up i'm gay it's no but i even up. like that you refer to yourself as a knucklehead right and yeah the definitely I, I can't no and not because I, I, I like you referring to yourself as such it's just that you understand that you know what wh- where your roots are and you know what when it comes to the next generation in the urban environment because i'm urban bred as well is like they listen to their own kind so they, right. you speak the same language you understand and um, and you provide hope and change for that matter, because you're a philanthropist yeah, on top of everything else. You know, that's no easy task. Like, where do you find the means to be able to just be generous like that? I mean, it just comes from the heart, you know, it just, it's, it's just self explanatory It comes from my heart. We, we, we've created this village. We built this village and it's just growing an everyday growing village. So to see it, you want to continue to see it grow. And that's just something that that pushes me every day because the next day it's just like, you know, one day I, it was an idea. Right. And now it's a, the, the community got backboards. It's a movement. Now and it's now a movement. the now park is getting movement, bathrooms, right? right? right. It, the uh-huh. park never had a bathroom in the whole time. And now the work that we've done, now parks is giving the kids a bathroom. You know, we got a basketball program. These kids are going state to state and never been off of out of their communities, you know. Um, All right, let's talk about that. Let's talk about some of the programming that you have built inside of Theory 9. So we do a, a educational workshops. We partner up with par- uh, partners with companies like Chase that comes in and do financial literacy um, programming workshops for the kids. So we teach them debit, credit, financial things such of such. Uh, we have a music enrichment program where we come and teach the kids music. We come and teach the kids recording, uh, management, not you know, but coming behind the scenes of the music industry, podcasting. Um, then we have a, a life coaching program. You know, we have the Rising Kings basketball, Rising Queens basketball program that's been flourishing. Um, we we got a kickstart with Gatorade, and that helped us like really. Um, push push the narrative with that and um we just got so many workshops and, and the kids just bring it to me you know you got an idea yeah. the kids bring it to me i add it in so what we want to do you know and it's beautiful it. you it's know, beautiful so before you keep going i want to make sure that people who somebody who may be watching understands how accessible it is to them 
right? So, so tell me what, what that registration process looks like. And it, obviously you already shared, you formed a community. These are wonderful, wonderful workshops that you're offering to make sure you leave things better than you found them. That's one of right. my favorite sayings. And so um, uh, if anybody's watching, do they need to be part of the Kingsbridge community? Or no, is, no, is this no. accessible um, to anybody in the Bronx? This is accessible to anybody in the Bronx, anybody in the city, anybody that, you know, anybody in the city in the Bronx. Um, it started with the Kingsbridge community, but we have grown over the years, and now we have kids coming from Jersey, kids coming from Queens, kids coming from Connecticut down to just build with what we got going. Uh, we've built these relationships. We got kids coming from Albany. You know, we take the kids up to Albany and build. So it's not just a, a Kingsbridge thing anymore. You know, it's a worldwide universal program. So how many how many sure. kids you have in your program altogether? Over four hundred, four jump four hundred kids right now. Those are 400 lives you're already transforming. Amazing. Just try and appreciate that, man. Amazing. No, that's amazing. That's amazing. And I'm applauding you at the top of the year because I know that you're still expanding. I know it's going to grow into something even bigger. I so mean, I that's why I want to make sure that whoever's watching and maybe looking for this type of community, how do they go about becoming part of that? Um, they, you know, they can find us on uh, We Are Theory 9, uh, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, check out the website, wearetheorynod.com. And, you know, just reach out to us. We are around. We in a couple of schools, and we reach out to more schools to get into more more facilities. But we operate throughout the whole week. You know, you can tap in with us, and we make sure the kids are safe, the kids are educated, the kids are building, and the kids have the proper engagement, positive engagement, positive role models around them and not, like you said, the knuckleheads, man, they can learn from their own con here. Um, right, we right. Young, we all young brothers and sisters. And then we have, you know, the older ladies on our board that keep us straight, so. Right. <laughs> Thank you so much for bringing it here to our viewers. Here's to being a lifelong mentor, my friend, because that's how we transform lives. Appreciate that, man. That's Appreciate stuff. that. Thank you for bringing it here, everyone. Shakir Singers. All right, I'm feeling you, Theory Nine founder. Yes, we here. Moves, transforming lives. And if anyone is interested in participating, you can visit wearetheory9.co. And uh, of course, stay tuned for oh, it's .com. I'm sorry, wearetheory9.com. Stay tuned, this more open when we return.